Last year, we looked at the five practices of a fruitful congregation. Here's what we have been doing in three of the areas. Are we becoming a more fruitful church? The first area is radical hospitality, how we welcome new people, how we look after our current congregation, and how we show ourselves to be a church for all people. We quickly realised that radical hospitality was closely linked with us as a people of faith, and that meant we needed to look at how we were developing our own knowledge, feeding ourselves with God's word, equipping ourselves to be both radically hospitable and to undertake the third practice, risk-taking Eight, mission. Seven, six, four, three, two, one, and lift off. The reason we wanted to present together today what we've been doing is because we felt that the three strands were intrinsically linked. We needed to get the uh, radical hospitality right, we then needed to build on our own faith development, and then finally we could go out and undertake risk-taking mission. In Hebrews 13, we are reminded, do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. And we recognised how important it was to first to get that right here in our church building. From a welcome point each Sunday, to relocating the welcome stewards to the first floor, introducing new people to other members of the congregation and putting together welcome packs. Tanya and the welcome team have ticked all the boxes and you, the congregation, have been instrumental in making many visitors to the church go away feeling included and welcomed. We wanted to show our hospitality to others and what better way than giving something away? Free tea and coffee have been given to our neighbours on a Saturday morning as they pass by. We have been encouraged to show random acts of kindness, some of our ladies giving flowers out in the high street and other members painting pictures and using them as a prop to offer prayer to members of the public with some incredible results. And radical hospitality is also about pastoral care. Tanya and the accessibility team have been working hard to address some of our pastoral needs with some awareness training, lifting the lid, giving us an insight into mental health from a Christian perspective, to hearing loss awareness sessions to help us better serve those with hearing loss in our community as well as organising a Boxing Day social for those amongst us and our community who may be socially isolated at Christmas time. And another one of these is planned for this year. Pastoral care remains close to our hearts. Libby and Margaret are doing an amazing job and we mustn't forget the essential work that Terry does in this area. We need to put in place robust systems to ensure no one falls through the net as Terry moves on. This is an area for prayer but one that is being addressed by intentional faith development and the development of our house groups. Through the five practices, we are developing more home groups. We have added two new groups in the past few months. There are now in total seven, meeting at different times, not just to study, but to fellowship together in a much deeper way, supporting each other through life. Home group leaders meet together to pray for our next study material and they pray through any pastoral issues that concern the groups and home group leaders take an active role in pastorally caring for members of their group and their extended family. Through all group studying Nehemiah, we have been enabled to discuss freely our understanding with other group members and we have developed relationships learning to love each other deeply and identified a number of emerging leaders ready to take on new groups as we need them. As we grow in love for one another, it is our prayer that the home group numbers will continue to grow year on year because this is your church and it's your family. Here is a flavour of some of the things we have introduced and are considering. In Matthew 28, 19, Jesus says, Now go in my authority and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
as we continue to grow in love for each other and in our confidence to understand the Bible in a deeper and meaningful way, we will grow in our desire to do what Jesus says and take risks in sharing the good news of Jesus. This can be in our work environment or amongst our family and friends, but especially for us at Trinity, it being the people of Long Eaton. Some of the things we have been doing in the past 12 months have already been mentioned and our successes have spurred us on to look at repeating some of these things and embarking on new ventures. Crossways continues to draw members of the community and we are looking at ways in which to engage with these people in new and supportive ways. We are excited to be planning our first listening post in Long Eaton, giving people the opportunity to come and talk and to be signposted to other agencies or charities which can help them. Early next year we'll be running our first cat money course and this is a fantastic opportunity to really serve our neighbours in a practical and meaningful way. We have thoughts on how to develop this with potential to run complementary courses such as cooking on a budget. With the appointment of Jane to develop family work we are planning Parenting for Faith courses and to develop Family Morning to become more of an opportunity for outreach. We have a growing messy church and also have a well-established holiday club, which gives us a great base on which to build our family mission works. There is a real hunger within Trinity to develop our risk-taking mission. We need to pray about which next avenues to follow. The challenge for all of us in this, what can I do? Acts 2 verses 44 to 47 says, All believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to everyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all people. The Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Through everything we have discussed in the three practices, our desire is to reflect and to grow as the early church did.